There are nine components of the business model canvas. These are the components. Some might look familiar, some might not. Sit back and relax. I will explain all of them one by one and there will be multiple examples for each of them. Okay? Okay. But before I continue, I need to remind you to subscribe to the channel. What is a business model canvas in the first place? It is your entire business model in a canvas. Business model is about describing how the company does business. In this one single page, you will have all of the information related to your business model that first year business students learn to write an entire paper on. I don't know about you, but in my first or second semester, we had a big project on the business model of a hypothetical business. We had to write an entire paper on that. And then a few semesters later, we learned that we don't need to write down the details all that much. And there is already a tool that is much better to visualize all of the components and it is very easy for investors to understand. The investors don't have a lot of time and they can just look at the business model canvas and understand what your business is all about. The business model canvas was first proposed by Alexander Osterwalder. Now you can group some of these building blocks together. And the canvas is designed accordingly. Of course it is. This section is called the offering section. This one is about infrastructure. And this section is all about your customers. And the last section is about money, everything related to money, as in finances. Now let's start. We will start with value proposition first. Value proposition is exactly what you are doing with your business. What are you going to do? Meaning, what is the product or service you are providing to your prospective customers? In other words, what value you are proposing in the market? What is the value you are adding to the people? So in this section, you need to write exactly what problem that the customers have that your business aims to solve. What is it that you are providing to the people? This is actually what you are selling. You have to properly illustrate that in this section. All right, now let's move on with the customer side. There are three building blocks over here. Customer segments, customer relationship, and channels. First, let's talk about customer segment. Who is it you are selling to? Customer segment is actually your customer. You are not creating your product for every single person in the entire market. There are specific types of people that you have to target and focus on selling your goods or services to them. There are companies that go for the entire market, that is mass market strategy. But if you are going to target the entire market, you have to write down in this section that you are doing that. You can go for niche. You can go for two or three different segments with two or three different variations of the product or service you are providing. I might make a full video on market segmentation later. But for now, you need to know that in this specific section, you will write down who are your customers, who you will be selling to. Next. Let's talk about customer relationships. In this section, you are going to write down how involved you are going to be with your customers, how you are going to get new customers, and how you are going to keep them with you. That is, make sure they don't go for another business. You can just sell your product and bounce. No need for customer relationship. You can provide additional services and increase that positive customer relationship. 
Businesses also provide dedicated personal assistance. For service providers, you have to have a good relationship with the customers if you want your customers to make a second purchase. But if you are selling toilet papers, you don't really need that. Now, let's talk about channels. Channel is how you are actually delivering your product or service to the customers. There are many ways you can provide your value proposition to the customers. Often, companies use multiple channels. Choosing a channel is very important for people. Because if you only sell your goods on brick and mortar shops, and most of your customer segment are actually very busy and prefer online delivery, it will be a fatal mistake for your business to not open an online shop. Channel is how customers get your product or service. Now we will move on to the infrastructure side. Here we have key partners, key activities and key resources. Key, key, key. Let's talk about key partners first. Key partners are the people that are not part of the organization, not part of your organization that you really need to function as a business properly. The most common key partners are usually the suppliers of your products, the people you get the raw materials from for your product. There are strategic alliances where another company can be a key partner. Complementary businesses can become key partners in the market as well. Complementary businesses meaning if you are a tire manufacturer, you can try to make a strategic alliance with a car manufacturer and that would be a key partner for you. Next, we will talk about key activities. What do you actually need to do to make the business happen? If you are producing a good, how are you doing that? Talk a little bit about the supply chain. If you are a service provider, how are you going to provide your service to the prospective customers? Those are your key activities. What do you need to do in order to provide your value proposition to the customer segments? Then we have key resources. What do you actually need to provide the value proposition to the customers? These can be the raw materials for producing your goods. These can be the people working in your company. It can be the factory or the warehouse or the actual place where you are selling your service to the people. Oh wait, excuse me, not selling your service, providing your service. Now let's move on with the finances section. There are two building blocks in here. Let's talk about cost structure first. How much money do you need to spend in your business? Where the money is going? Is it going more towards the key resources or the key activities? How much money do you need? If you are producing goods, can you go for economies of scale or economies of scope? What are your fixed costs that you have to pay every month? And what are the variable costs that depend on other things? Am I going too fast? Uh, don't worry, I will provide examples, broad examples later. It will be clearer then. The last section is revenue streams. Of course you need revenue streams. How are the customers paying? Are they paying after buying the product once? Are they paying a subscription fee? Do you provide the freemium model where they get some of your service for free and for premium content they have to pay more? You have to write down how you are going to make money. For the sake of business model canvas, just remember that you have to write down how much you will charge from each customers 
and how you will charge them. That's it. All right, I can't wait for it anymore. Let's move on with examples. Before I start, remember, these are absolutely hypothetical examples. So, first, this is the model. These are the building blocks of the business model canvas. Let's make smartphones. Our value proposition would be smartphones. But here's the catch. We are making smartphones for people aged over 60. These smartphones will be sturdier, they will have more battery power and of course user friendly. They will have only the basic options like calling, video chat, maps and the channel would be both online and offline. And since you are targeting older people, you definitely need to have proper after sales service. That will increase your positive brand value. The key partners can be your manufacturers. You will be partners with a company that will manufacture everything that is to your smartphone. And what you will do, that is key activities, is you are going to assemble the smartphone. Assembly. Someone else is making that, manufacturing that, they will be your key partners. Very important. What you will do is you are going to assemble that. For assembling, you will need factories and people that work in there. They will be your key resources. Another key resource can be your brand patent so that nobody can copy your business model. You will be the only one that will be selling these simplified versions of smartphones to older people. There will be many examples in this cost structure. Some are payments to the manufacturers, of course, utility bills, all types of utility bills, and salaries to your employees. And your main revenue stream will be asset sales. You can charge for after sales service after a small amount of time, but for the first six months to one year, you probably need to provide free after sales service if any issue arises. Main revenue stream will be asset sales, meaning when you're selling your smartphones, you will get the money. That was my first example. Now, the second example is a little bit weird not as conventional as the first one but hear me out it can be profitable all right what you are going to have is you are going to sell pictures of a van of your custom made van in your website all right there will be pictures on your website People have to pay to see these photos. It will be your own custom made van. And the pictures will be only available in this single website alone, nowhere else on the internet. And the customer segments can be men aged over 30. I think they will be the people that will be willing to pay money to see pictures of your van. I don't know, women might want to see that. But main customer segment will be men aged over 30. Just because you have one customer segment in your mind while designing your value proposition does not mean no one else can buy from you. All right. Other customer segments can buy from you, but you are designing your value proposition for this specific customer segment. The channel obviously will be an exclusive website. How are you going to build customer relationships? You can have one on one communication with people paying to see the pictures. Your key partners are obviously going to be the web host, the company that is hosting your website, key activities, I don't know, 
taking pictures of your van and the maintenance of the van can also be part of your key activities key resources will be the van of course the camera and you need to put a copyright on these pictures so that it does not go around the internet and devalue your pictures they will be able to find these pictures only on your website the cost structure would be your web hosting fee and there will be also the recording gear cost and van maintenance cost the revenue stream would be subscription fee these people that are willing to pay you to see the pictures of your van need to give you money every month maybe five dollars maybe ten dollars maybe there will be different tiers for for different types of pictures maybe a higher tier for interior pictures of the van i don't know you can get creative with that wasn't that a great idea okay that's it i hope that was enough for everyone if you have any question ask away in the comment section below like comment share subscribe and all that jazz all of those things are actually supporting my channel one way or another but if you want to go one step further to support me you can go to patreon and support me over there enough with that now bonus galaxies are actually a lot of stars that are held together by gravity a lot of stars what holds together these huge stars well something bigger it was mostly a theoretical assumption that there are massive black holes at the center of galaxies and what do you know in recent years scientists have actually found out that there is a super massive black hole at the center of our galaxy that is milky way and last year we tiny humans were able to take a picture of it why did i say we humans are tiny because this black hole that is named sagittarius a is four million times bigger than our sun in mass well that was the bonus for today now this is the official end of this video thank you so very much for watching that is if you are still watching i am grateful And lastly, I really hope you learned something new today. Goodbye for now.